Villa Finale was a private home in the King William Historic District in San Antonio, Texas that was gifted to the National Trust for Historic Preservation in 2002. It is now a museum to be enjoyed by everyone. This is the story of the man who made it all possible, Walter Noel Mathis. When he was a teenager, a young teenager, he began collecting things. And um, he always traveled. And he would always collect when he traveled. My mother and Walter went on trips where they bought things, and Walter was always coaching her uh, what was worth collecting. It's true that Walter had a gift for uh, seeing what a, an object or, or a building, a house, or a neighborhood could become. And not everyone has that gift. He had that ability to understand the essence of something and know what it was and what it could become. Walter Mathis was a dedicated philanthropist and preservationist. He liked permanence, and I think that came from his early life, which was rather difficult. He had many things to overcome, and uh, it made him very self-reliant and determined. So going through the, the years of the Depression and having the experience of losing his mother at a young age, he knew he had to do things for himself, and he worked very hard at putting himself through college at the University of Texas. And when World War II arrived, he was a pilot and very patriotically signed up immediately after Pearl Harbor. He flew the A-26 and the B-25. You only had to fly 25 missions. A lot of people didn't make it. Uh, there was tremendous losses of American airmen. But if you did 25, you could quit. You could quit and go home. So Walter, at some point, reached that, and he volunteered for a several additional missions before he was released by the Air Force and sent home. As he had gone above and beyond the call of duty, uh, he got the Distinguished Flying Cross, which is, that's the highest actual flying medal you can get. Of the group that started in his squadron, about 27 men, only three survived. He was very uh, surprised to survive, and he very much wanted to give back. So I think preservation was the way he worked at um, enhancing life, helping to make things permanent, and that is part of the reason that he put so much time into the city and to working on King William. The neighborhood um, was, as Mother used to say, shabby but genteel. Many of the old families had, had aged out, perhaps had sold or were renting out their properties. And so by the time Walter bought his first house here, in 19, six, late 1967, the neighborhood needed some tender loving care. Walters was the largest project at the time and uh, was extensive, of course. His restoration will span two or three years, I believe. Uh, but when I first got down here, I thought, boy, this is Uncle Walters moving into a slum because this whole area was uh, was in bad, bad, bad shape, and this was the first building to really actually be uh, reconstructed. It had been divided into eight apartments, and all of the galleries around the house had been closed in to house bathrooms or small kitchens. I could envision it uh, redone and begin a year and a half of um, restoration, redoing it entirely and renaming it uh, my last villa, Villa Finale, because I don't intend to move. There were many things that made Walter Mathis special, but one of the things that made him extraordinary was his confidence. 
if he thought something was possible, then it's possible. And what he envisioned in his mind, he made it real. What he did is he bought all the houses and helped restore a lot of them. Some of them he took to a certain point. Yeah, O'Neill Ford, uh, who was a well-known architect at the time, said, uh, Walter Mathis, he, he saved King William. And then, then other people came in and bought houses here. Walter used his assets and financial skills to restore the neighborhood. He started buying and repairing houses. He helped buyers with financing so they could put more money into their houses. In all, he fully or partially restored 14 other houses in King William. Walter Mathis brought not just houses, but the neighborhood back to life. The real story here, the real significance, is about Walter's life, his legacy as a historic preservation practitioner, as an individual who got involved with his community and worked to make it better, to improve everyone's understanding of the heritage identity of San Antonio. Not too many people know this, but Walter Mathis worked with architect O'Neill Ford to design the large fountain at the McNay Army then. I worked all weekend to complete those drawings. Walter placed where it should be, and then uh, O'Neill drew a, a big circle and said, we're not gonna have a pit, you know, small fountain. And, and Walter said, well, O'Neill, I never was thinking of a small fountain. Walter filled this house with all of his collections and he curated each piece within the house. Uh, Walter very carefully placed all the furniture. He assembled even some of the collections so that he would put it together just the way he thought it ought to be. When one visits Villa Finale, uh, there's a feeling of being overwhelmed by the amount of objects and, and things that are in your field of view. And it's a wonderful feeling, I think, uh, because you know you, you see this and you see that and your eyes light about and everybody has th their favorite piece in this room or in that room. And I think that delighted Walter. I think Walter loved to give the tour because he would wait to see what you were interested in. And then he would tell you about that piece. And every piece had a story. Well, I'd say the same kind of care and creativity and sensitivity to design uh, that you see in the house and with the collections is very much evident in the garden. And Walter truly loved his garden. As hard as he worked every day of the week, Saturdays, if he was in town, was the day that he dedicated his work to the garden. Walter generously shared his home and gardens. With family and friends, he celebrated birthdays and debuts, engagements and weddings, fiesta and book signings. He invited San Antonio's soldiers and airmen to his King William Fair parties. His house was always filled with music and fun. Uncle Walter really helped shape the city of San Antonio. He's best known for his efforts in King William perhaps less known for his work chairing the Riverwalk Commission or the Historic Review Board. In 1962, there were two businesses on the river level in downtown to prepare for the World's Fair, Hemisphere 68. Second front doors were opened and historic buildings were preserved along the river. Now the San Antonio River is a top tourist destination in Texas and is copied all over the world. Well, I think it's people like him that, that help develop and keep history alive. Walter Mathis helped establish King William as the first historic residential neighborhood in the state of Texas. The King William District is part of the whole history of San Antonio. It showcases extensive architectural history from 1860 to the 1920s. 
That effort spawned many other historic districts in the city and state. Walter just had the feeling of how things should be, and they usually were right. I mean, he would get, he had a sense of uh, what was important uh, to do and keep. The, the old Ursuline Academy in downtown San Antonio was scheduled to be raised to build a 20-story apartment building. Walter Mathis helped block the project, advised on restoration, and the complex became home to the Southwest School of Art and the Club Giroux. Uncle Walter's reputation for design was well known throughout the state, and at one point he even helped raise money to restore the Texas governor's mansion, decorating it with historic furnishings and other fine antiques. Walter wanted people and organizations to succeed. He was treasurer of the Symphony, the McNay, and other nonprofits for years. The National Trust gives out an annual award that's their highest honor, and that's the Louise DuPont Crown and Shield Award. And Walter was uh, the recipient of that award, and I think it was one of the great honors of his life. It's a tremendous recognition of his lifelong uh, pursuit of, of historic preservation and a recognition of all the hard work that he'd done uh, for San Antonio. I think that's one of the things that made Walter Mathis so special uh, because here is a man that could see into the future. You know, what is the definition of a visionary? And a visionary is somebody that can see the future. Not just the future in five years or 10 years, but the future in 30 and 40 and 50 years. He had the strength of character to get done what he wanted to do. And Walter Mathis, changed all of us who knew him. He just had a great spirit for a love of life. He told me right before he died, he said, I, I wish I could do it all over again. He wanted to do it all over again.